is something I care passionately about. It goes right to the heart of how we can make London a fairer and more equal city. A city that works for all Londoners. Over the last five years since the launch of the Living Wage Foundation in 2011, London's economy has continued to go from strength to strength. There are now over 700,000 more jobs in the capital. The value of our economy has grown by over 50 billion pounds. And for the first time in London's history, there are now over 1 million businesses based here. But as you heard from the testimonies this morning, this success doesn't reveal the full picture. Over the same period, the average wage in London has only increased by 7%, whilst the cost of living has soared at a much faster rate. House prices have increased by nearly 50%. Private rates have gone up by nearly 20%. And the cost of childcare has increased by a quarter. On top of this, one in eight London households are now spending more than half their income on housing costs. Back when I was growing up, a modest income was not a barrier to my parents' dream of buying their own home. But today, the experience of people who now have similar jobs to my parents is very, very different. And for their children and grandchildren, the opportunity to share in London's prosperity seems even more remote. This is just not good enough. I want to see my daughters grow up in a city where everyone gets a fair shot of life and the opportunity to succeed. So I welcome the government's introduction of the national living wage in April this year. It's a step in the right direction, but it's a long way from a solution to fixing the low pay problem in London. It falls well short of the real London living wage. It benefits only those over 25, and it clearly doesn't reflect the true cost of living here in London. So what are we left with? In my view, one way to make a real difference to low pay and in-work poverty is to encourage more employers, more businesses, to pay the London living wage. This remains one of the strongest mechanisms we have for challenging poverty pay, and it's where I'm focusing my energy. And as Mayor, I'm determined to lead by example. So City Hall and the mayoral bodies will always pay the London living wage for our own staff and for subcontractors. After discovering that some subcontractors employed by the previous mayor were receiving less than the London living wage, I've tasked my deputy mayors and senior City Hall officials with conducting an audit to root out any examples of staff being paid below the London living wage. And by the way, those we discovered who are less than living wage, the London living wage, and are receiving the London living wage. My long-term aim <laughs> My long-term aim is to make London the world's first living wage city. A city where everyone gets paid enough to provide them with a decent standard of living. A city where it's a badge of pride for employers to pay the London living wage. To achieve this, employers need to follow the lead of the organisations represented here this morning. <coughs> we now have over a thousand accredited living wage employers across London, and that accounts for well over a third of the total number of accreditations nationwide. This is something we should be proud of, but I know we can go much, much further. So I'm planning a new agreement with employers that will recognise and reward those who pay the London living wage and maintain high employment standards. As well as promoting the London living wage, this agreement will pull together the best practice on a range of important issues like tackling the gender pay gap, creating more opportunities for young Londoners for apprenticeships, and taking steps to ensure a fair deal for parents returning to work. I believe this is the best way forward in London <coughs> with employers using carrots, not sticks. But in many cases, I hope we won't need carrots either. Because paying the London living wage is not just the right and moral thing to do, it makes good business sense too. As many organisations here today will know, paying the living wage can reduce staff absences 
and sick leave. It can make it easier to recruit and retain the best staff. And it can help boost productivity, making our businesses even more competitive. So finally, I won't leave you in suspense any longer. <laughs> I'm pleased to announce today that the new London living wage rate will be £9.75 per hour. Yeah.